This past weekend, NASCAR returned to Indianapolis where we had an amazing epic finish to the Xfinity Series. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything. NASCAR. So we had a packed weekend this week. Of course, I've already talked about the cup race on Sunday, but we also had three other series in Indianapolis. One at the big track, Indianapolis Motor Speedway being the Xfinity Series, and then the other two being the Craftsman Truck Series and ARCA at IRP, Indianapolis Raceway Park. So I guess we should start with that ARCA race. It was the ARCA Menard Series at IRP. It was actually an ARCA Menard Series slash ARCA East race. They do a lot of these conjoined races, the ARCA East and the ARCA Menards primary series. Early on in the event, we had some battles between William Sawalich and LeVar Scott. But eventually, there was no surprise from... From my angle, Connor Zilich got up and took the race lead. I consider, I've talked about Connor Zilich multiple, multiple times on this channel. I consider him to be the best young talent in the sport, even better than someone like a Corey Heim or a Carson Quaffle. I consider him the best young talent in the sport right now. Well, after Connor took the lead, it was pretty much Connor Zilich versus William Sawalich again for this race at IRP. We saw battles from these two throughout the day, but with around 30 laps to go, William Sawalich was actually able to take the race lead away from Connor. We ended up getting a couple of late race cautions. Connor Zilich would end up moving back into the race lead. And it looked like he had the race locked up. Then we get a, another wreck with only two laps to go. Sets up a final restart where Connor Zilich has a perfect restart. Drives away from Sawalich and gets another victory on the season. This time in Indianapolis. It is extremely impressive what Connor Zilich has been able to do. Around two, three years ago, he had pretty much zero oval experience. And over the last year, he's gotten a lot of oval experience. And he's a very talented oval racer. I don't know if he's as good of an oval racer as he is in a road course racer. But he might be one of the best, if not the best, road course racer here in the States right now. And let alone young talent, period. Might be the best road course racer in the United States right now. I'm very excited to see what Connor Zilich could possibly have set up for next season. William Swalich as well. Both of these drivers are very talented young drivers. And I want to see more of them in the higher up series. Connor had his start at Coda. And then Swalich has gotten a couple of starts as well. I know Zilich is about to get back into the car at Watkins Glen here in a couple weeks, and that will be pretty cool to see. Overall, a pretty good ARCA slash ARCA East race we had in Indianapolis, some good racing. It was unfortunate to see Tony wreck out. She was actually having a pretty good day out there. But let's move on to the Craftsman Truck Series at IRP. Now, the Truck Series put on a pretty great race. We saw some great racing throughout the day. Overall, I think that's kind of just the way IRP races too. It always produces some fantastic racing, whether that's aggression or using multiple lines throughout the day. It's really entertaining to watch a race at IRP. Well, in the very early goings, I think it was very noticeable which drivers were going to compete for the win. First, you had the McAnally teammates of Christian Eckes and Tyler Ankrum, both of them, the 19 and the 18, were extremely strong all day. I think Ankrum might have even been a little better than Eckes, but he just was unable to find the race lead. He was running top five most of the day, though. 
Then you had Grant Infinger, who actually won the race here last season. A very talented race car driver has been doing a bunch to improve the race team he, he is at. Infinger has improved throughout the season, and that's just the race team getting better notes and just improving throughout the year. I really like Grant Infinger. I would love to see him win a championship this year, or maybe win a couple races before the year's up, because I think he's one of the most underrated drivers in the sport. And if Champion hasn't, that's his big sponsor, Champion. If Champion didn't stick by Grant Infinger, I don't know if he'd be racing in the sport right now. But NASCAR needs drivers and personalities like Grant Infinger. And then the best driver throughout the night, and it's not really a big surprise, was Ty Majeski. Ty Majeski is actually the one that won the race here last year at IRP. A very talented race car driver racing for Thor Sport. He's gone through some tough times in his career, but he's really found himself in the truck series, especially when they go to these short tracks. And Ty Majeski was very dominant of this race. It was pretty clear and obvious to me that he was the fastest car in the field. And late on in the race, he showed how fast he was. You had Christian Eckes up there leading the race with not all that long to go, around 20 to 30 laps to go in the event. And here comes Ty Majeski made, making some passes on that last run takes the lead from Eckes and just drives off into the sunset. So Ty Majeski would go on to win his first race of the season, Thor Sports' first race of the year, considered to be potentially the powerhouse team of the Truck Series and the first win for Ford this season in the Truck Series as well. It has been a very tough year for Ford across the board. They had a slow start and cup last month and a half, two months, they really picked it up. They got their first win in Xfinity just last week at Pocono, and now they get their first win in the Truck Series this week at IRP with Ty Majeski. All that being said, the big story of this race, I'd say, was Corey Heim versus Christian Eckes. These two have a, a rivalry brewing. I wouldn't say it's like your Denny Hamlin... Ross Chastain sort of rivalry. This is more of like, I don't know what to necessarily compare it to, but these two are very, very competitive with one another. Overall, we've seen a lot of clean racing between the two. On Friday night at IRP, we saw something a little different than we've seen between these two. It looked like to me that it was pretty much a racing incident off of turn two. Corey Heim obviously looked at it different, but according to me, it was pretty much a racing incident. You had Christian Eckes and Corey Heim make contact. Corey Heim comes off the wall a little bit off of turn two and doesn't get up as close to the wall as he probably should. Christian Eckes taking his line off of the corner very slightly gets into Corey Heim, which ends up creating a problem with Corey Heim. You have to make a pit stop, had a flat tire. Real unfortunate for Heim. Heim also wasn't having a race winning day. He was definitely having a top 10, top 5 day. But we sh we saw Corey Heim sh show his displeasure underneath the caution flag coming up to Corey Heim, not to Corey Heim, coming up to Christian Eckes's door showing his displeasure. It was really out of character of Heim. I don't mind seeing this stuff, but I, I feel like it should probably be a legit incident. I know he was upset that he had something go wrong with his car in that instance. But like I said, it, it was very slight contact and it seemed like a racing incident from my view. And I think most people viewed it as that as well. It was a racing incident. It was a little bit of both of their faults. There was no ill intentions or anything they had a conversation on pit road. Corey Heim was upset, very upset. Christian Eckes gave a very nice, cordial, mature interview. I really liked his interview. He was like, oh yeah, he had a reason to be upset. It's all good. I would have been upset too. And just talking about his day, just very calmly. And he was even pretty calm with Heim. Heim was obviously very upset. And he's just kind of standing there like, all right, Corey. Okay. All right, Corey. Okay. And that's all he was really saying 
I was very impressed by Eckes and pretty surprised about what Corey Heim was doing. Like I said, I have no problem with it. I, I have no problem with drivers doing that. It's entertaining for me. It brings in eyes to the sport. Heck, even if someone throws a punch, that, bring, that brings in a whole bunch of eyes. All of a sudden, NASCAR is on ESPN and SportsCenter when, when that happens. But I just found it pretty surprising. I don't think I've seen Corey Heim react quite like this to anything and to have him react like this to something I view as a racing incident was just kind of surprising to me. But this turns up the heat. This turns up the heat a little bit on this developing rivalry between two very young, talented race car drivers. Christian Eckes has been doing a lot in that number 19 Napa machine. And Corey Heim is just... It's always Heim time in the Craftsman Truck Series. He's just been completely dominating that series for the last year and a half, two years at this point. It's been very impressive to watch Heim and Eckes this season because if they weren't racing this year, I don't know who would be winning the races because these two have been... If one isn't winning, it's usually the other one. And this week, Majeski stepped up and got his first win, not just for himself and for Thor Sport, but also for Ford. All right, now to move on to the probably the most entertaining race, I'd say, this weekend. It was definitely not anywhere close to a perfect race this weekend, though. And that is the Xfinity Series at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Of course, the Xfinity Series returning to Indianapolis, the big oval for the first time in a couple of years. So a lot of drivers had this track circled because you have to keep in mind, most of this Xfinity Series field has never raced on the Indianapolis Oval. Of course, you have Justin Allgaier and Brandon Jones and a couple of other drivers that have been around since the Indianapolis Oval. But a lot of these drivers that are currently in the Xfinity Series have only been in the Xfinity Series for two or three, maybe four years. Let's get the negatives out of the way real quickly because I mainly want to be positive about this race because overall I'd say it was a good race even though I had a lot of issues. My big issue was the horsepower, the top speed. I think some of you may have seen all the things talked about on Twitter and other social medias about what was going on with the cars. The package that NASCAR brought for the Xfinity Series at Indianapolis Motor, Spe- Motor Speedway was was awful, to say the least. It was a really bad package. It was really disappointing to see. Luckily, they're very great race cars, so it was still able to put on a good race. But you saw drivers in the draft. Pretty, I think the highest speed I really saw all day might have been like 171, 172 miles per hour. I didn't I don't think I saw anything higher than that. And this is in the middle of the straightaway with the draft at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In the cup race, they were going over 200 miles per hour. And I don't necessarily expect Xfinity to be going over 200 miles per hour per se, but 180-something, 190 is kind of what I'm looking for. And to get at max, at max, with the draft, full speed, 171 miles per hour, that, that ain't doing it. That is not doing it. Honestly, watching the first 15 laps of this race was a little scary to say the least because I was like, this is going to be by far. I even made a post on Instagram on my stories that this is going to be the worst Xfinity Series race of the season. I definitely jumped the gun. It definitely wasn't the best race, but it definitely wasn't the worst race either. But that's mainly because of the car and the drivers. But those first 15 laps, after those first 15 laps, I was just thinking to myself that they're just going to race in a single file line all day. No one's going to be able to draft up and pass. No one's going to be able to do anything. And then on these restarts, it's going to be like Atlanta for like two or three laps until everybody gets single file. And then there's just going to be no passing. That's what I thought the race was going to be. Luckily, we did not get that. We got a good amount of strategy involved throughout this race. We did have a good amount of cautions. And overall, we had some good racing. If I was ignoring the miles per hour, the top speed that they were going, if I had no idea what speed they were going, I would have been like, that was 
a pretty great race. We saw some great passing throughout the day. Like I said, we saw some great strategy. We saw a lot of teamwork even involving those Stuart Haas cars until there was no teamwork. And we'll get to that a little bit later about the finish. But let's get to the race itself. And it started off with the bang as we had a huge lap one incident in turns three and four at Indianapolis. You had Sam Mayer involved in this. You had Josh Berry driving the number 15 for AM Racing. You had Connor Daly racing for Sam Hunt involved in this incident. That was something I was upset about because Connor Daly was so quick in practice and in qualifying. He ended up showing a lot of speed throughout the race as well. I think he ended up finishing 14th, was racing in the top 10 most of the day. I think Connor Daly has definitely earned himself some more NASCAR starts, whether that's in Xfinity or the trucks. But overall, I was very impressed by his day. But after that lap one incident, I'd say there was a most of this race was pretty uneventful. There was some decent passing, like I said, in strategy. But overall, pretty uneventful for the remainder of the day until we got into those last 30 laps. With around 30 laps to go, we had one of the favorites of the race actually spin out in front of the field, that being Eric Almarola. Eric Almarola, of course, making his return to the Joe Gibbs Racing Xfinity number 20 after some time away. Looked pretty strong throughout the day, was top 5, top 10 most of the day, but spun out late and it looked like Eric Almarola's chances of winning at the Brickyard and kissing the bricks were gone. We'll talk a little bit more about Almarola in a little bit. I said I was going to bring Stuart Haas Racing back up and those two cars I'd say were probably the two best all race long talking about Cole Custer, and Riley Herbst. These two were extremely strong late, going back and forth for the race lead. We had some late race cautions as well. One of those I will get to after we're done talking about the race and its finish. But there was a couple of drivers that were avoiding these incidents and at the same time were flying through the field because of them having fresher tires near the end of the race and also learning a lot throughout the day and I'm primarily talking about Shane Van Gisbergen SVG the Kiwi he's been so great on the road courses and I've noted on this channel multiple times I continuously see improvement on the ovals and Indianapolis definitely obviously it's not a road course but other than maybe Pocono, it's the most road course oval, if that makes any sense. A very difficult racetrack to get into a rhythm, a very hard racetrack, especially for NASCAR drivers. Four very different corners, even though they look the same. Four very different corners, and Shane improved throughout the day. Late, was on a great strategy, and was flying through the field. It, with around a couple of laps to go, I honestly I honestly thought he was going to win the race with a couple of laps to go, but he ended up finishing fourth. A great effort from Shane, who continues to improve on the ovals, a fourth place finish from the rookie. So if he was fourth, who was the top three? Well, the top three had one of the most entertaining last two laps of a race I've seen in a very long time. You had the teammates of Riley Herbst and Cole Custer just going at it in those last couple of laps. And then on the last lap, Riley Herbst finally had a great run on Cole Custer, got to his bumper, coming through four, looked like he might have given him a little touch, got to his inside. They make some contact off of turn four. Herbst has the edge, has the run, but not too far behind them, who now has a head full of steam because of these two getting into each other, is the driver I mentioned earlier that spun out in front of the field around 30 laps ago, and that was Eric Almarola. I was so impressed by Almarola's comeback because in my opinion, he did not have a winning car all day, and then after that spin, all of a sudden, he found the speed or found the motivation or something because he was flying at the end of this race he, like I said he was one of the drivers that also had slightly fresher tires and at this point it looked like Eric Almarola had the win as he jumped p 
past both of these drivers, clearing them before turn one, taking the white flag. But Riley Herbst had probably the best car all race long, and I've never seen him drive like that. That was the best driving performance I've seen out of Riley Herbst. Best driving performance I've seen probably in the Xfinity Series all year long. The way he raced those last two laps was amazing. It was just amazing to see. He kept the pressure on Eric Almarola through one and two. Had a great turn three and just was able to, in between three and four, was able to get to the inside Completely sends it. He he sends it into turn four. He completely sends it trying to clear Almarola. While sending it, he starts dirt tracking it, looking like he's racing at Eldora coming into turn four. Straightens it out. And the most impressive thing is he didn't slow down at all. That's why a lot of people didn't notice it when it happened live. Because he just, he didn't slow down. He kept the speed up, completed the pass. And got his second career victory. And it comes at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The post race for this race was fantastic. Seeing Riley celebrate in and out of the car. His parents were very emotional. It was really cool to see. I even noticed they had the the Terribles logo on the number 98 car. They don't always have the Terribles logo on the car. If you don't know, that's... That's the Herbst family company, Terribles. I, I think they're gas stations, I'm pretty sure. It was it was really cool to see Riley Herbst get that victory in such epic fa- fashion, especially with all the talks recently about, hey, Riley Herbst might have a seat at 2311. And then you have a lot of people, including myself, who are like, I don't think he's ready for that ride. He's not ready to race in the Cup Series. And I don't 100% think now that he's all of a sudden ready for the Cup Series, but this is a step in the right direction for sure. I'm a big fan of Riley Herbst. I was there for his first career win last year at Vegas, and I've I've followed him his whole career back when he was at Gibbs, and I just, I really enjoy Riley Herbst. He's a very passionate, passionate driver, and honestly, it's taken him a long time to really find his footing in NASCAR. But this year and last year, I think he's really found his footing. Even though he hasn't found the victories this year, I think he's had a great year, even though he's yet to find victory lane. It was the same deal with his teammate Cole Custer. was running great, but did not find victory lane. Then all of a sudden, the last two weeks, you had them finish 1-2 at Indianapolis. Riley Herbst getting his first win of the season. Then the week before... Cole Custer getting his first win of the season. But an overall good race at Indianapolis, other than, of course, the very low speeds and horsepower. But a good race nonetheless. But give me all your thoughts down below. What was your favorite out of the three races? What do you think is the future of the Eckes Heim rivalry? What do you think is the future of Connor Zilich? And do you think Riley Herbst moves up? To the Cup Series. Well, now it's time for the Olympic break. NASCAR will be taking the, the next two weekends off. It looks like actually this upcoming weekend that ARCA will actually be racing, though. ARCA being owned by NASCAR, but not technically a NASCAR series. ARCA will be racing at Salem. There is a very young, talented driver that's making their debut. Looks like they're attached to Hendrick at this point because they are driving a Hendrick cars.com vehicle and that is Corey Day a very talented young short track and dirt racer very excited to see what he can do on Saturday like I just mentioned we are an Olympic break so I do have some special videos coming out this weekend and next also if you haven't already follow my gaming channel where I'll be doing all my live streams that being Boy Short Gaming this weekend actually on Saturday and Sunday I plan on doing lengthy i racing streams maybe 2 to 3 hour i racing streams during both of the afternoons maybe even the mornings on Saturday and Sunday so keep an eye out for that and if you haven't already I would appreciate you subscribing to this channel I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. 
But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.